Hello and welcome to French Wedding Series, our brand new project that aims to introduce creme de la creme of the French wedding industry to brides and grooms willing to celebrate their destination wedding here in France. My name is Catherine Mivial, I'm a Paris-based wedding planner and I plan destination wedding, wedding weekends and elopements for couples from all over the world. We are located in the beautiful Chateau de Bouffemont. It's a private castle located 15 minutes driving distance away from Paris. Couples from all over the world love the place because it's easily accessible. It has on-site accommodation for up to 30 people and it's absolutely beautiful. Inside you'll find three interconnecting ballrooms for intimate receptions and gatherings and you also have a separate area for the dancing party and the lounge area. Today I'm meeting Julie Lumasson, commercial manager of Grand Chemin Traiteur. This is one of the most famous catering companies in Paris and its region, and the company often intervenes here in Chateau de Bouffemont. Hi Julie, thank you for having me. So, let's start from the very beginning. Tell us how does a typical French wedding dinner look like? So, we have different way of uh, planning a, a wedding, uh, especially in Chateau de Bouffemont or in other venues. What we do the most, um, it, for the beginning, we, we begin by a, a cocktail. So, the cocktail, we have, you know, the hot and cold pieces, and we can have some cooking show. So, the cooking show is when the chef is behind the buffet and is preparing some product uh, in front of the guest. Uh, so, we can have different kinds of products like foie gras or salmon. Um, and it's very important in the cocktail because, you know, it creates some animation, some dynamism during mm -hmm. the cocktail. And people uh, now are really involved in gastronomy. We have a lot of uh, uh, TV shows about gastronomy. So people like um, to interact with the chef, uh, understand what he's preparing and taste. And it brings some extra entertainment elements into the, the cocktail hour. Yeah. Typically a period when people are not quite sure about what to do. They have a lounge music, they have uh, some kind of I don't know, guest book to sign. And it's great to have a chef that yes. will be entertaining them and letting them discover new flavors, new, uh, new dishes, something that they are not usually... Uh, able to try yes. at home. Yeah, completely. And <clears throat> you know, when you have a lot of people, like 150 people in a wedding, uh, everyone doesn't know everyone, so it's nice for them to go to the show and talk to the chef and talk to each other. So yeah, it's create re really a, a good atmosphere during the cocktail. So we really like to do it. Okay. Um, so after the cocktail? Yeah, we go to the, to the dining room, so we have the big surprise of the decoration of the room. Um, and Typically, we have, you know, a starter, a main dish, uh, the cheese, which is really important for French people, uh, and after the dessert. Uh, what we like to have, uh, it's a trou normand, you know, like a sorbet between the starter and the main dish. Uh, it helps you because you, you eat a lot during the cocktail and with the starter, so uh, it it is fresh, so you can be able after to continue with the main dish. It's kind of a digestive in the middle of the meal, actually. Yes, <laughs> exactly. I think it's very refreshing and it's very interesting. And once again, if you have an intimate event with like 30 to 50 people, I think it's a really good idea to serve granité yes. or uh, trou normand. Yes. Uh, because it's very surprising, very refreshing. It has some hard part of alcohol inside and typically guests love having this surprise. It might be not the best idea to add an extra, an extra service uh, for bigger events because it might eternalize the dinner, yeah. but for intimate events it's like a really good idea to have this uh, granite pose or true normal pose. Yes, completely. Uh, after so you have the main dish, we have uh, some kind of meat uh, which are really appreciated by French people. You know, we, we can do beef or lamb, but mostly we do veal uh, because everyone likes it and everyone um, eat it in the same way of cooking, um, which is not the same for beef or lamb or other meat. So it's uh, the, the veal is the, the, the meat we do the most. And after we have the cheese, so the cheese people like it, so we can have a different way of serving the cheese. Um, and after we can have the dessert, so the dessert, it can be a, a dessert, a plate dessert or a buffet dessert, which is really appreciated. Uh, and after the, the wedding cake, so the pièce montée, the traditional pièce montée with a shoe uh, or with macarons, or we can have a wedding cake more American way. <laughs> uh, but you know, the, the traditional one the, with the shoe, uh, we did it during a long time and now, people begin to prefer 
other way of uh, having a wedding cake. So Julie, please tell us, what are the most famous, what are your best sellers in terms of French dishes? For French people or international people? International people. Oh, international. <laughs> okay. So for the let's begin for the starter. For the starter, the foie gras works a lot um, for sure. Um, people like foie gras, and it's really typical for French. For France, sorry. Um, and we try, you know, as a caterer uh, to uh, help people to discover the foie gras with other tastes. So we we uh, mix it with some uh, fruits or flowers like apricot or strawberries. So it's really nice. People like it. And we can also have uh, some scallops, scallops for collots, uh, and also lobster, lobster uh, especially for um, Chinese people, uh, Chinese bride and groom uh, organize uh, the wedding with, you know, five uh, dishes. We have two starter, two main dish, and one dessert. So it's really important for them um, to focus uh, on the dishes uh, and to propose different uh, kind of product uh, to the guest, for the guest. So as far as I understand, like Chinese clientele are looking for a gastronomic experience, yes. which means that their dinner might last quite a long and much longer than a typical wedding dinner would yeah, last. Sure. Uh, how much does it last uh, when it comes to a dinner with five different dishes? Oh, it can last during uh, three hours and a half until four hours. It's more, it's longer uh, than, than usual. A, yeah, like. What um, about traditional menu? What about traditional? event with the starter, main course and desserts. We are more um, around two hours and a half because you know the idea uh, now people like to enjoy the party so um, for sure they, they like to have the dinner experience uh, but they really want to have the starter, main dish, cheese and dessert and go to dance uh, before midnight you know because before in French wedding uh, you have the dessert and you begin to dance at 1, 2, 3 a.m. sometimes. Mm -hmm. So it's really late during the party. So now we will try uh, to, to end the dinner at 11 and a half or midnight maximum uh, for after, to after um, uh, begin the, the dancing part. Okay. Um, so yes, for the Chinese people, we have the, the lobster and the foie gras because they like it. And after in the main dish, we can have uh, sea bass uh, for the fish part. And for the meat part, we have the, the beef fillet. Okay. And for American people, we also have uh, beef, they like it, and uh, lamb. Uh, it's different than French people. They don't um, eat the same. Mm -hmm. um, they are looking for typical French uh, dishes. So it's why we try to have a, a large, a big uh, menu uh, in our company um, for people to, to create really the, the wedding and the, the wedding menu they want. Okay. This is wonderful and I actually would like to n mention as well that um, indeed foie gras is something like typically French mm. and I think it's a great idea to make your guests discover mm. this product because it can be uh, cooked in a very different way, it can be served in a very different ways. But from what I have seen um, in demands from my couples, that very often we serve foie gras at a cocktail party mm. because some people are not happy about the way foie gras is produced, even though we always try to use like you know uh, responsible producers. But some people are it, it's, for some people it's just too particular the taste of the foie gras. So I think it's a good idea to serve it as a cocktail so that those who are interested could get an experience mm. and try it uh, instead of prepare, proposing it as a starter dish. Yeah. Like, uh, like some, uh, you know, the, uh, the fish starter, you know, it's special. So we have it, we have a ceviche for the starter, but it, yeah, it's very good because you like it, but it's really um, complicated because there are a lot of people who don't like fish starter. Mm -hmm. So like the foie gras, we can offer it during the cocktail. So people who, are, who want to try or who are interested can go. But you know, for the starter, we can uh, have something uh, easier. More for, traditional. Yeah, more traditional. This is, this is something I really like at Grand Chemin. This is one of the reasons I like Grand Chemin so much is that they have a huge selection of uh, meals and culinary shows and animations and meals that you can offer your guests during the cocktail hour so that they can, they can discover as many flavors uh, as they can. And at the same time, you can concentrate and focus on something more easy to understand for people during the main um, dinner. Yeah. 
we, we, we saw that, you know, with uh, uh, international weddings and French weddings, they really want to have uh, something new with dynamism during the cocktail, uh, but they focus to something very traditional on, on the main dish, you know. It's why we do the veal so much. Uh, for French wedding, for example, we have the, the veal with a gratin dauphinois, you know, so it's really a traditional uh, dishes. Uh, it's how grandmother will cook it, yes. you know. Um, and during the cocktail, you can have something very new. Uh, we, we create... Um, um, a culinary show with some uh, uh, salmon uh, and also cigar and Jack Daniels, you know, so it's really original. Uh, yeah, but this you, is not something yeah. you've seen all over already. <laughs> this is like a real experience and like brides and grooms are excited to discover these things during the degustation, but the guests are excited as well. Yeah, sure. And we can create, you know, um, some cooking shows, especially for the bride and the groom. Sometimes we have someone who come from Brazil or uh, come from England, Italy. Uh, so we can create special um, cooking show uh, for them. It's to highlight the origins yes. and to, like, to add this extra personal dimension into the, yeah. into the menu. So tell us, what about the new trends? What are the new trends you observe in the industry today? So... Um, you know, now we are really focused on local products. Um, so our company are really uh, in this uh, process since the beginning because we are a family of farmers at the beginning uh, and we cultivate our land. Uh, so we have our own products and we, we, we buy other products in uh, uh, farms near, uh, near our, uh, our farm, <laughs> near our venue. Uh, and everyone now are really, um, really want to have some local products or products you know where they, they, where they grew, come from yeah, where they come from so it's really important um, after in terms of new trends I think uh, and we saw that people don't want to stay longer you know for the main dish for the dishes for the, the dinner they are looking for more quicker meals more quicker dinners yeah. to enjoy the experience and the party for longer yes so we have the, the cocktail which is really important today so normally we have you know one or two cooking show now we are more than three or four uh, maybe five cooking show uh, to, and you can go to the um, uh, dinner and not have a starter and mm -hmm. begin by the main dish and they like to have this experience, you know. Uh, also with, with the dessert, uh, normally we, we talked uh, just before about the pièce montée of choux or macarons or wedding cake. Uh, now I have some requests of having a, a buffet with some uh, donuts, crepes, fruits, you know, something new and different than we can see normally in a wedding. And something less official, more yeah. laid back, more cool, where couples can really express their personalities and add like an extra personal touch to to, to the celebration. What about the vegetarian options? I know your company is super, super strong uh, when it comes to vegetarian meals. Actually, one of the rare companies where you come to the degustation and you can almost regret if you are not a vegetarian <laughs> because their vegetarian options are so good. So what, what is your observation when it comes to this point? For the vegetarians, we have more and more requests. You know, two or three years ago, uh, we do not have this kind of request of vegetarian. We, for all our weddings, we have one or two or five people who are vegetarian. But bride and groom chose before a meat or a fish. But now we have a lot of bride and groom who want to have uh, all the wedding, which is vegetarians. Uh, sometimes they are vegetarians, sometimes not, but they want to have a, a, a wedding, you know, uh, responsible. For the cocktail, uh, we can have some uh, uh, cooking show, uh, which are really nice, sometimes nicer than the meat or fish. Uh, for example, we have a, like the big garden. Uh, so on the buffet, you have uh, some cheese, uh, which is prepared with uh, uh, some flowers and some herbs. And you know, uh, all the aromatic herbs have a different taste. So the idea is the guests go to the buffet, um, talk with the chef, and the chef can uh, um, help uh, the guests to choose and depending. explain yes. why what is heating why is heating why there this particular uh, chutney or bread is served with this particular type yeah of, exactly of and all the aromatic herbs come from our garden so it's really nice and people are really interested um, and we have also the tomato bar so we will do it uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> together for a wedding. It's really nice. You have a espuma of tomatoes, uh, like um, like ice cream tomatoes. Uh, so it's really nice to to taste. Have you heard that ice cream tomato? Like, <laughs> isn't it crazy? <laughs> like, this is why uh, I really love working with Grand Chemin because they are so creative when it comes to presentation, to the service, and there is always this intellectual search for more culinary experiences that would please people, that would surprise people uh, so that they can actually experience the wedding in a whole new way, not just like eat food, be yeah. there, but they experience it and talk to people, talk to chefs, talk to waiters so that to get um, the new insight, to get the new idea and to understand better how they consume or what they consume. Mm. And uh, you, you asked me about the new trends. We also have, you know, the, the family style. Uh, so you have a, a big plate. Um, you, we, we offer uh, and we put it on the middle of the table for the guests. And people can choose, uh, uh, can, can uh, serve uh, themselves. Um, so we can, uh, we can have, you know, a, a table chef. We choose the bride and groom chose before the wedding uh, someone at the table who will, who will uh, serve the, the dinner, so it's really nice. For me, you know, and what I saw, um, it doesn't work, you know, in typical uh, um, castle like Bouffemont, but in a big farm, you know, with a, a big table, mm -hmm. um, it kind of works. So and it, it has to match the, the, the general event environment and the ambience. Yes. But I have, re uh, I have realized that as well, that many couples are looking for something more simple, even though they have a very important and impressive uh, setup and the background, they're looking for a more laid back service style and a laid back experience. Yeah. And people now want really to, uh, they want to, um, uh, to understand and know the product they will hit, you know, because uh, before, before, like, I think five ye years ago, uh, we put a lot of different uh, um, herb arom uh, aromatic herbs or um, wasabi, you know, different kind of products and there are a lot of products in the plate and you didn't understand what you will eat and when you try, there are a lot of a lot of flavors uh, and now they want to to focus on something simple you know we create for um, uh, the menu uh, 2021 we create uh, just a burrata with tomatoes it's simple but we we know now and we we saw people wants to understand the plate uh, and be able to um, to try it and to understand the, the flavors, you know, it's really important now. And with the family style, it works because in the big plate or cocotte, uh, we have the meat with some vegetables, maybe some potatoes and just uh, uh, some theme or uh, rosemary, you know, but really simple. Thank you very much for sharing all your insights. It was very interesting to find uh, everything about the way couples are creating the wedding dinners and wedding menus today. Um, Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> it was uh, interesting and nice to talk with you and share our advice or what we saw in different weddings. Thank you for watching French Wedding Series. I hope it was interesting and I really hope you've learned something new about French wedding celebrations. In our future episodes, we will be talking about video, decor and wine. So if there are any questions you would like to ask us in advance, please leave comments or contact me via private message. You'll find the information about all the vendors participating in this uh, episode in the comments to the video. And I really hope to welcome you in France soon.